which is why over here, in addition to what we call compass bearings, that's what these are, compass bearings, we also have true bearings. True bearings. Okay. Now, true bearings just say, look, forget all this north, east, south, west business. Let's just use an angle and we measure everything starting from north. Okay. So instead of calling that north because it's the starting point, I'm going to call it zero. Okay. Now, therefore, if I measure clockwise around, clockwise, that would make this guy 90. This one down here would be 180. And this one over here would be 270. Okay. Now, it keeps going, what's the, what's the largest angle you would have that indicates a true bearing? 360 and 0 are the, are the same one, which is fine. But you wouldn't really say 360 if you can just say 0. So probably 359 and whatever number of decimal places. Okay. Uh, because the largest number you'll get is three digits, these are often called three-digit bearings. And in fact, to make that official, we actually often write them, even when they're less than three digits, we write them with three digits. Like that. And like this. Uh, if you're familiar, if you recall back from when you first encountered 24-hour time, we do the same thing with that. Um, you don't say 700 hours, you say 0700 hours, if you're ever having to describe that properly. Okay. One last little thing, because they're called true bearings, they often are written with a T afterwards, which indicates true. Okay. Generally speaking, if you see the three digits, you know they're going to be three digit bearings. If you see the T, you know they're true bearings. If you want to be super ultra safe, you put both. Okay. Now, the wonderful thing about this is it allows us to refer to any direction we like to any accuracy we like. Okay. So for instance, on this um, true bearing system, I wouldn't say northeast if I wanted to go in that direction. What would I say? 45. I'd say, yeah, or, or 045. Okay, so let's actually just put that on here in red. We won't put all of them, but this is a good example. I'd say 045 true. If I wanted to describe a direction like, say, oh, let's have a look. How about north, northwest? North, Northwest. Look at where it is. Think about what angle it would be. This is a bit tricky. Put your pens down and look up for a second because it would be better if you look by, sorry, think by looking rather than think by writing at this point. Come back to this original diagram. Between north and east, uh, I'm on this side, sorry. Between north and west, what's that angle? Nine. That's 90. So therefore, if I go from north to northwest, that should be. 45, and if I go again, it'll be 22.5. So each one of these, one, two, three, four, they're all uh, 22.5 degrees. So if I wanted north northwest, let's come back to my green now. North northwest should be 22.5 degrees short of the full revolution, right? Which is 300 and. Thank you. Okay, so this allows us much more precision. So long as you know how to read where to start from and which direction to go in, it's vastly superior because you don't have to worry about which, which name refers to what. Okay. Now, some people have said, uh, and I think this is fairly valid, well, both of these systems have their flaws. Both of these systems have their flaws because people know North, East, South, West very, very well. If you said to someone a random angle like 209 degrees true, it's like, well, where is that? You have to stop and think for a moment, don't you? Okay. So what we did is, even though these are the two main systems, compass bearings, true bearings, there's a third sort of system which is halfway between the two. Okay. So it's not a separate one, it's a sort of hybrid, if you like. Draw a third compass bearing, compass rose form. So, this third one here, is a cross between all the names and all the numbers. Okay, so again, I just want you to mark in the names of the main compass bearings: north, south, east, west. 
Now, if I wanted to describe a spot like, say, east northeast, east northeast, let's put it in here. Just don't label it because we're going to call it something different. East northeast is quite confusing. So, what we say is we start from north and then we use an angle. You can see this is why it's part way between. We use an angle to go in the east direction, right? So, we're going to go this angle here. What's the size of it? 67.5. Uh, let's suppose it was just a bit off because just awkward decimals, that kind of thing. We start from north, let's call it 68. We go 68 degrees to the east side. So the way we describe this is uh, north 68 degrees east. Uh, if I wanted, say, let's have a look down here. Let's, let's pick a different random angle over here, okay? Let's suppose this little angle in here was 10 degrees, just there, okay? So we always start from the vertical. So this is going to be from south. I haven't gone to the east, have I? I've gone to the west. So this would be south, 10 degrees west. Okay? So what this captures is the intuition that we know about northeast, southwest but the accuracy of all of these numbers. It's slightly awkward because it's like two systems kind of jammed together, but people use this and you need to be able to interpret it, okay? Does anyone have any questions about these? Arib? How do you know like which, oh yeah, actually never mind. So you'll be able to know which one is which by the way that it is written. In exactly the same way that when you see 12.35 p.m., you know that's 12 hour time because the way that it's written, the format tells you. And when you see 2047, you know that's 24 hour time and that's 847 in the evening. Okay, because of the way it's written, because of the way it's written, you notice every format sort of tells you which one's which. Okay.